Hello Jackals, in the last video we took a look at the pivot point and today we'll use that knowledge to make an analog clock with a pendulum. The animation will be continuous, the pendulum will swing once a second and the second hand will make a full circle in 60 seconds. Now let's get digital. Now open the media pool, make a new fusion composition, right click, make a new fusion composition, you can give it a name and you can change the duration to one minute but in this case I'll just use 20 seconds and you'll see why when I get to that point. Then take the composition, put it onto the timeline, select it, put the playhead over it and go into the fusion page. Now you can make shapes in two ways and you can also use images but I'll use the shapes and I'll be using these shapes which you can access by going to effects, tools, shapes and you have all of the shapes here or you can use the rectangle, ellipse, and combine them with the background node. And if you want to know how to make a custom toolbar in the Fusion page, I also have a video on that. So first I want to make a pendulum, so I'll use two ellipses, and I also use rectangle. I want to combine the ellipses with an S boolean, but before I can display them, I have to use a shape render node. Currently this is set to intersection, we'll have to use subtract, but we have to move the ellipses so that we get a result. And if you don't get the result, go to S boolean and hit Ctrl T. This was a little bit buggy, so just move the shapes around until you get the result that you actually want, which in this case is a moon shape pointing down. You can then also increase the ellipse size if you want. Maybe I'll just keep it like this. Then you'll want to connect the S rectangle and I'll also use an S boolean and this will be set as union. But go to the rectangle and adjust the height and the width and you can also adjust the current radius. Now why I wanted to do this with an S boolean it's because I can change the color of both the shapes. Instead of the S boolean I could use the merge but in this case if I change the color this only applies to the rectangle and the S boolean would have to be adjusted individually. So that's why I use the S boolean, but if you want you can also use a background node at the end to change the color here. So the pendulum is done, but I want to use a transfer node. I'll scale it down and adjust the pivot point to about this point. The pivot point is this X, so I'll move it up and by doing so you can see that the whole pendulum actually also went up, so I have to adjust the position and move it back down. Now I'll be animating the angle, so I'll do that now. I'll go to the beginning, keyframe this at minus 45. You can use any other angle, you could also use minus 30 if you wanted to. Then because my composition has 24 frames, this means that in one second, so this is actually 23, in one second it will come to frame 45. But I didn't keyframe this value, so keyframe this value now and keyframe the value at the beginning as minus 35. So this is the animation, but from this point on it has to go back. So at frame 47 this will be again minus, so this is the animation. It's a little bit off, but we'll fix it by going to the spline. You can have show only selected tools enabled, select the transform angle, click zoom to fit, select all of the points, as to smooth them out. Now the animation will look better, but it's not there just yet. So what you can do is adjust the handles. You can use control and use the middle mouse button to zoom in and out. So I'll adjust the handles, so when the animation happens it will stick a little bit at the top and at the end. That looks better and now with all of the points selected, simply use set ping pong. And this will make a continuous animation regardless of how long the clip is. So the pendulum is done, now I want to add the second hand and for that I'll simply use rectangle and as I said you could also use an image. 
If you use an image, this would be the image, and then you want to add a transform node at the end. So this is what we have. We have to adjust the rectangle and change the height. We can also use the current radius and position it. We can use the transform node to do that. So first I'll use the pivot point and position it at the bottom. So maybe something like this. And now I'll adjust the center position. So this hand is a little bit too big. So I'll adjust the height. Now I can also add a polygon or maybe an ellipse so I can see the pointer. So this is my pointer. I can just change the color. Maybe something like this. Now I want to animate it. And again, for the animation, we'll use the transfer node. Now for the animation, we'll use the angle. But because I've adjusted the height of the rectangle, I have to adjust the pivot point again. And now I'll use the angle to animate this. Now if the pivot point was here, where it was, you can see how this moves. So if I want this hand to move from the center, you have to position it like so. Now I'll go to the beginning and put here equals. This will be an expression because I want to have this done automatically and throughout the whole clip. So I know that 24 frames is one second in my case. So I can do time, which is the current frame divided by 24. And let's see what we got. So it's moving in the opposite direction and it's moving very slowly. Let's see what we get the value at the end. So here we get 20, which is correct if you think in seconds, but it's not 20 represented by the clock hand. It should be about here, which in math terms, this is an angle of 120 degrees. So what I did is I simply multiplied this value by six, so this is about what we want, but it needs to be on this side. So I simply used minus in front to flip it around. And now we get what we want. We get a smooth animation for the seconds and the pendulum is swinging. Now the last thing that you can add, well, you can add a lot more things, but the one thing that I've added is rectangle. And this will represent the hours around the hand. I'll apply a background node to this. I'll make this white. I'll simply connect it just so I can see how big it actually is. So it's too big. Make this small. Maybe something like this. Now what I want to add is a duplicate node. And I'll make 12 copies because the clock has 12 hours. And in the angle, you can type in 360 divided by 12 to get the degrees automatically done for you. Now in the duplicate node, you might be tempted to adjust the pivot point in the Y axis. And it looks okay up to this point, but if you increase the value, you can see the direct angles start coming out. And that's not what you want. So we'll simply go to direct angle, adjust the center position, and then we'll go into the merge and simply position this to the center of the clock hand. Now the top rectangle is cut out, so I would have to make this smaller maybe, and also adjust the position to something like this. Then you can use the text node, connect it, type in the value, copy and paste it, and also display it so that you can see it, change the values, and then simply position them to where you want them to be. Now in the edit page, the clock hand should come to 20 seconds and it does. And I now extend the clip to here, which is a full minute. The clock hand should make a full circle and it does. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to get the winter resolve and video editing content twice a week and hit the bell notification icon so know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon and until next time Jackals, keep it digital. Thank <laughs> you.